Another weekend that beckons that starts off on the, the Friday in uh, Tebeka where we are racing at uh, Fairview and then we proceed on to a double header of local racing Saturday. It is Western Cape Racing from Kenilworth. Here, our sponsors have proudly bring us a feature race, a grade at three feature. It is the 2024 renewal of the 200,000 Rand uh, Betway Sycamore Sprint and uh, that will be one of our latter races on uh, the afternoon. Certainly looking forward to that and discussing the entire card with the team. Uh, that is uh, Daryl and uh, Darren Good to have Darren back in a tow, and it should make uh, for a hearty and informative uh, discussion. Don't forget, you can get uh, in touch with us, all things being equal, with on X, uh, that is formerly known as uh, Twitter, and of course on a WhatsApp, or whichever suits you. Darren and Daryl will be able to make uh, and uh, respond to your requests. Right, let's get straight in uh, to the meeting, Daryl. A very warm welcome to you, warm welcome to Darren. We'll be talking to Darren just uh, in a few moments' time. You're going to be giving us a bipod. Last Saturday, it looked uh, pretty straightforward, but as the afternoon unfolded, it uh, got a bit complicated. 200,000 Rand plus in the pick six and all the exotics paid well. Cecil, uh, if there's a repeat of that this weekend, I wouldn't be surprised. I'll make this card extremely difficult, challenging. But if you're wanting to have a bet and put your head down on a horse, I know it's at restricted odds. You can do it in the second race at Turfantine. Quick trip. I've seen 7 or 10. I think that's a gift. I can't see her getting beaten. I had my reservations in her first two starts on the half felt. She's now back against her own sex. There's only one first time in the race. And the word is from Mr. Khan that she's a nice filly. But she should need the run. She brings the strongest form into this race by far. And... Uh, barring that first time, I think she'll win by a good few lengths. So Mr. Khan is not uh, too uh, confident about uh, Dragon Dragon. He should have a line uh, through uh, Quick Trip, having uh, won that race with his first ever horse that he saddled as a fully fledged uh, trainer. So Quick Trip, the boys, five uh, winners in two meetings. That is the Crawford boys. Are well done to them and more power to them. Very good morning to you, Mr. Burrows. Before we uh, turn uh, to Mr. Ramirez's uh, bipod, what are your thoughts on the card and uh, race number two, Quick Trip? Are you in the same uh, corner, 7 to 10? That is a uh, pass or post? Uh, definitely. This filly looks an absolute blinder in this field. I can't believe she's still a maiden after nine starts because she's placed in features. Um, she's got some strong form lines behind her name. I labelled her last time out, and I thought she was a winner going through the 100. She fought off her nearest rival, and then C. Shanti came flying up and caught her on the post. Um, she would have come on from the run, third run back, and the 1160, the ideal track and trip. So a bank in orbit, and maybe take an early double quick trip into MK's dreams in the next race, uh, just to add, just to boost some value to quick trip's odds. Thank you for that heads up. Let's confirm it is the Mr. Marie with uh, that uh, bipod. It is a bank of the one. And then uh, as we uh, pro approach uh, the end of that uh, bipod race, number six, which will be the penultimate, he has gone at three and seven. Outlay 360 Rand, be on by 12.25. That is the offer to race number two. So it's an early start to Turfentine Racing on a Saturday. Right, let's have a look at uh, race uh, number three. This is a play soccer 6, 10 and 13 graduation plate over the 1600 uh, meters. Well, we've already heard what uh, Darren is uh, leaning towards, and that is the 7 MK's the dream. Improved run, a second run after gelding and a stable change. That was on the inside uh, track where we will not be racing. We're on the stand side track. But uh, draw six, the Calvin the Bib retains the ride. And you reckon, Mr. Burrows, uh, it should be a uh, decent uh, bet at uh, 33 to 10? Um, I do believe he's going to shorten. I just have a feeling because, you know, he there was a lot of market support for his new stable in January when he was beaten four lengths. And it just looked like the 1160 was too quick for him that day. And last time out over the mile, he was running on really well in the closing stages. Uh, he's got a handy galloping weight. He could be well ahead of the handicapper still. His danger could be Presley. Now, this horse, the 1,800 meters last time out, he just never got rolling. Uh, he had a handy galloping weight that day. The market support was there, and he just stayed on one pace. The drop back to a mile on the stand side track, uh, we could see him bounce back. I also give Global Impact a slight chance here. Uh, he's having his peak run. He's much more suited to the stand side track. He could get involved. But MK's dreams and Presley to fight it out. 
Presley last time out uh, was uh, supposed to be Johan's best uh, runner on of the day, but uh, didn't quite uh, produce. Still got uh, within four lengths of a supreme dance. Uh, can we draw a line up through that uh, last run? You can, Cecil. You know, this was, he didn't break badly, but then suddenly he found himself right at the back of the field turning for him. He was out of his ground. He stayed on in the latter stages. He's much better than that effort. And um, he certainly forms part of my play over here. So I'm expecting a much better showing on his behalf. Um, MK's dreams, you know, I fancy Turconov strongly in that last race that he competed in. And I did make him the danger to Turconov. And I saw him move down to the start. And you know, usually Tony's runners are really eye-catching moving down. They, they, and I don't think that he, he really took me by surprise storm going down i wasn't impressed with him so i'm really keen to see how he goes down to the start this time around um you can see in his last start he was staying on all the time and that was a short uh, running this time a uh, more testing mile longer running i think that will suit him and he's having his peak run the horse i probably make the one to beat is number eight royal edition now last time <laughs> yeah, i last time i Cecil, that was a very strong field he was out at the weights and you can see this also in the past when he pushes forward he really does well um dennis is going to get him into a striking position if not lead and dictate this race and if he, i know he's not well treated at the weight of yeah but don't read too much into that because he ran well above his rating last time out. and i think he's more than capable so i'm gonna be leaning towards the eight roll edition respect for numbers one three seven. and seven okay are they all in the pa Let's yes. have a look at I'll make that. it tricky now. I've, I've narrowed it down to two numbers, three and eight. Three and eight. And I was thinking about you yesterday after the first leg of the bike, but I says I thought I'd <laughs> learned my lesson from Daryl. You go as wide as you can in those baby races. There it is. That PA three and eight has uh, narrowed down, but uh, you can include numbers of one and a seven, a budget permitting. And then in that penultimate race, uh, race number eight, a two and eight, that would be Cosmic Star and uh, the eight uh, being Amber Rock. That's a story of the PA. That will be race uh, number three of uh, seven, which uh, sees the start of the PA. A very competitive start uh, to the pick six. We will not be touching on the pick six uh, selections uh, for this race. We've got a trifecta selection from uh, Mr. Marie, but we're going to turn it to Mr. Burrows. There's a pinnacle stakes over the 1400 meters. And unfortunately, the last time we had a similar field assembled, it was Unzen who came out tops. Unfortunately, there's a scratching. But uh, the stable companion for Quantum Theory after that brilliant run behind Melech, which uh, later produced uh, the winner of uh, the horse chestnut that is main defense is in uh, the betting and that is uh, going to be second favorite at 15 to 4. The favorite is a 5 humdinger and uh, that is to be part of my informed mark of in Rendsburg for Mike Decock, 5 to 2, 15 to 4, the 4, Quantum Leap and then the 10, give me a shot, we just discussed that form line when we we're touching on Royal Edition, that is at 9 to 2. Mr. Burrows, a very good start uh, to that uh, pick 6. Uh, how would you suggest we negotiate the pick 6 if you were suggesting one? Well, in this type of race, I would put Bingwa, Quantum Theory, Humdinger, Give Me a Shot, Texas Red, and Savannah Storm. So I would go 2, 4, 5, <clears throat> 10, 11, 12. Now let's touch on Give Me a Shot. She's a fully loaded with ability. She got up to win uh, her first run back on the high fault, and she's only got 52 kilos to shoulder. You've got Texas Red. That just keeps on surprising me. Because I didn't think he was, I thought he was an average horse at first. And he just keeps on improving. Um, he often throws his race away early where he doesn't focus on the race. And then he only gets into it late. But he's got 50 kilos to shoulder and he could get involved. Um, you've got to include Humdinger on that cracking last effort. Quantum Theory's got ability. He's overdue. And Bingwa, uh, also a horse with tons of ability and having his peak run. So it could get tricky. Thank you very much, Mr. Burrows. You're going to give us a trifecta, I think you said, uh, for race number four. Would you include uh, one of your selections from last time? I think you know where I'm going. Number three, Future Pearl. No, definitely not. You were, you're very <laughs> unforgiving these days. <laughs> Cecil, um, I like the look of Texas Red over here. You know, <clears throat> last time out, he was traveling too hard in the running of that race uh, they didn't go quick enough for him yeah you got a lot of pace in the race you got the likes of Hamdinger even without Unzen you got Hamdinger you got Forever Mine you got Fire and Flames 
So when Texas Red settles in running, since being stepped up to 1400, his form has been ultra consistent. And I think a lot is in his favor, especially with the way the race is going to be run. So I'm leaning towards number 12, Texas Red. I do have health respect for Give Me a Shot. Now, last time out, we heard from Adam Marcus heading, I mean, Adam Azzy heading into that race. They weren't that bullish. They were of the opinion that that filly would need it. And she's really a high class filly. So if that run has brought her on, 52 well drawn. I think she's going to be right there. Uh, expected improvement from number nine, Captain Peg. If you have a look at the weight uh, structure of this race, she's actually joined best in with Humdinger. And I think the 1200 on the inside track is a bit too quick for her nowadays. A one draw, I th certainly uh, think she could run into the trifecta quartet position. And then you've got obvious claims for Humdinger and one other that I've left out. Um, yeah, so the numbers that I've put in, oh, Quantum Theory, Yes. he has to go in. You know, they've made a few changes with regards to the equipment, and the track and trip is ideal for him. So 4, 5, 9, 10, and 12, preference for the 12. 4, 5, 9, 10, and the 12, that'll be a box traffic. Yes. Thank yes. you so much. Let's confirm that uh, selection. 4, 5, 9, 10, and uh, 12, and uh, we should be off uh, to a, a decent uh, start in uh, the uh, set fourth uh, race of uh, the afternoon with that court trifecta possibly coming through. Please be reminded, number eight, Unzen, is a scratching off time to that first leg of the pick six, 20 to 2. Right, let's get to a race number five. This is a racing 244 racing uh, for you. If it is a mess, 94 handicap just underlines what sort of a card we have to look forward to uh, come Saturday at uh, Turfentine. And of course, one or two old favorites are uh, back on the high felt. The likes of uh, the three just be lacquer. But uh, your favorite in a race number four before we turn uh, to our uh, analysts, it is the four Vix Princess, who is at 18 to 10. Just be lacquer, 7 to 2, 6 to 1 about the 1K flights, 8 to 1 about uh, the 2 bit. Tuna, it is a 70 to 2 and a better bar. Those, Mr. Burrows, once again, we start with you, sir. It is a very competitive race, and number five, it's a Phillies and Mares 94. And once again, they go over that distance of 1400 meters. I know you have the honorous task, but this is the sort of challenge you thrive on of giving us a jackpot. Now, how do you negotiate that first leg of the jackpot? Well, uh, my leading light tests have to be numbers one, three, and four. Now, let's touch on Just Be Lacquer. You know, she took a part in the Phillies Guineas, the Scepter, last time out in that uh, very, ex what, uh, that big prize money race behind Rapidash was a cracking effort be behind him, uh, beaten two and a half lengths with a tongue tie fitted for the first time. Um, first run back on the high fault, but I think we're going to see a big run from her. Uh, I think the 1400 is actually the ideal trip for her. A uh, Vix Princess, consistent on the high faults, done absolutely nothing wrong. She did start short in her last two starts and she was beaten. But as long as she settles in running, she'll run another cracker. Uh, Cape Lights, the drop to 1400 could be ideal. She's drawn out deep at 10, but she does show pace. Maybe she can overcome it. I know they start just about on the bend. And Bertula, uh, a bit in and out of late, but she has taken on uh, quite strong. So... Uh, the one, two, three, and four I've touched on, and then number seven, eight, and Lucy in the sky, the 12 with 48 kilos to shoulder could uh, spring a surprise. Thank you very much. Before we turn to that selection, Mr. Marie, anything you can add to that? Just be lacquer, as uh, Darren rightly points out, a great race in that uh, great run in that uh, seven and a half a million uh, rand race, which was taken out by the uh, Johnson uh, team. That is with the Rabbit Ash. Yeah, the Gold Rush. Cecil, are. Uh... Um, I agree wholeheartedly with Darren. You know, this Philly put in a few slightly below par, number three we're talking about, yes. just be like a, a few s below par efforts. And then last time out in the gold rush, they fitted the tongue tar. Mm -hmm. And it was a cracking effort. I know Tale of the Comets had his um, excuses, uh, but she did finish the, uh, alongside the likes of the winner, Rapidash, yeah. Coastal Commander, Tale of the Comet. Infrared, those are very decent sorts in the making. So I like her chances. I think um, track and trip is ideal. You know, her form on the high field before going to the Western Cape was really good. Oh, I tremendous. mean, she's got the beating of Bavarian Beauty. As I know that was up the straight, but still. Um, Mia uh, she's also beating the lives of Mia Moo. Yeah, she's yeah. really, really talented, this daughter of William Longsword. 
Vix Princess, uh, although she was beaten in her last two starts, her form is very decent, uh, consistent. I think she may be better than her last effort. She was exposed a long way out on that occasion. Uh, her penultimate start, she also had a few excuses. She didn't settle. So like Darren touched on, she has to settle because this is a stiff 1400. They they head up that uh, that hill. So if she is going to be overdoing it, she's going to be her own worst enemy. And then Betula, I'm of the opinion that this uh, daughter by Danone Platina may have benefited from some time off the track. You know, she has been contesting some decent races, um, taking on some high-class individuals. A one draw, hefty putting to shoulder, but uh, she certainly... Have could have come on from that rest. So two, three, and four. I think we have to lean towards just be lacquer. Just be lacquer for uh, the uh, team. And let's have a look at uh, that uh, jackpot suggested by Mr. Burrows. It is uh, the field in that third leg. And then the banker is at the back. And I can tell you that uh, on air, the uh, stable were very, very impressed with that uh, post maiden run, which was the uh, first to run on the high felt since winning that maiden. That is Amber Rock in the colors of owner breeders, the Drogenstein uh, stud. 140 Rand is uh, the third large lay race five is the start of jackpot one. Right, it is the race before the race. I say race six, and that, of course, uh, the race that we're looking forward to is race number seven. That is uh, the running of the 2024 Betway Sycamore. But race number six is not uh, to be cast aside. It's an 1160 event, a graduation plate. It's off at uh, 10 minutes uh, to uh, three. And uh, we turn to Mr. Burrows after giving him uh, the uh, betting. The seven elegant ice is at uh, 22 to 10. It's uh, suddenly looking very solid that last uh, run, I believe, Mr. Uh, Marie. The three ready to charge is at 33 to 10. 11 to two, the five. Mount uh, Pilatus at sevens and uh, better bar those. Right, uh, Mr. Burrows, I know that Elegant Ice is not at the top of your list, but I'm sure you got a bit of respect for that last form line. Yes, uh, I made it a tours race, ready to charge an Elegant Ice. Now, Elegant Ice, um, she does come in best weighted with the four kilos off her back. Uh, she's got 50 and a half, where ready to charge is 59. But I still believe ready to charge is a better horse. Uh, from 1,000 to 1,160 or 1,200, uh, he's a serious racehorse. Three runs back behind Future Variety. He blew the race at the start, losing three lengths. He moved up like a winner, and obviously it, he was just found wanting the final 100. Uh, he would have won that day, beating Future Variety um, at level weights, and Future Variety is very good. So just on that run alone, um, he's the right horse. His penultimate start, he was only beaten 2.9 lengths by Thunderstruck, one of the best sprinters in the country. And last time out, didn't stay the mile from a deep draw. So he's a he's a really good sprinter, and I'm hoping that he can put the record straight in this type of company. Thank you so, so much. So you've got it there without even confirming the uh, selection before we round off into race seven. That uh, Mr. Burrows is very much in the corner of uh, ready to charge. And of course, Future Variety nearly gave everybody a bit of a fright in that uh, last uh, big feature, sprint feature, where a Thunderstruck literally had to pull out all the stops to hold off Future Variety. Yes, Cecil. You know, the Future Variety from day one, we've heard about his ability back at home. And since they've belted him, He's really turned the corner and uh, he's now producing it on the racetrack. You know, I'm also in the, I love the fact that ready to charge is back up the straights. Uh, six furlongs, I think he's, he's deadly over and certainly his best form represents that. Funny enough, go back to his second start of the course in distance. Uh, that was a cracking effort behind Jerusalem Arraine. Now we all remember who was second in that race. Sandringham Summit. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, and the three of them pulled so far clear of the balance of the field. Uh, for him having his second run, that was an outstanding effort. So, my reservation is that recently he has tended to give some starts away uh, when the gates opened. And you can't afford to come out slowly carrying 59 mm -hmm. where your opposition or your main rival is carrying 50 and a half and she's going to be on her bicycle or hard up against the outside fence where you want to be so that's why i'm not willing to separate it i'm also in uh, the camp of ready to charge being a better horse the same as darren burrow's um, uh, opinion is uh, but if he is going to give her some start uh, she m she may fend him off so three and seven i think you can focus on the exactors 
Exactors are for Mr. Marie, but we are focusing on the borough selection and it is a win bet, I believe, on the three ready to charge. Let us confirm that indeed it could be a third win from nine outings, all things being equal for ready to charge bred by the Drakensteins. That nominee is Gainer Rupert. That is race number six of graduation over the 1160. Okay, let's have a look at the betting for the uh, 2024 renewal uh, that is of the Sycamore. Proudly brought to you by the proud sponsors of Waited to Win, and that is a bet way. It will be over the 1160. Favorite is from uh, the locally based stable of Attorney uh, Peter, and that is one foul swoop looking to make it back to back victories in a feature. It's a regular pilot, uh, Calvin Abiba board, and that is a 22 to 10. 26 to 10 is a two. Mrs. Browning, fives and better bar those. The three white pearl drops back in trip, and I'm sure as we turn it to Mr. Burrows, uh, we'll hear a bit more detail about the likes of Alula Star and uh, Mrs. Browning. How do you go about? I know you went wide, and I think that is the way that uh, most of us go. But if you had to be put on, uh, on the spot, where would you say the top three will come from? Uh, top three. Well, let's start off with an interesting runner to me. Um, this three-year-old White Pill. She's never run over a sprinting trip. She's debuted over 1,400. She's gone 14 to a mile. And if she jumps with them and has some speed to stay up uh, just off the speed... I think she's going to run an absolute blinder because she's run two lengths, give me another, beaten a neck by let's go now. Uh, in the Phillies, guineas, beaten five lengths, give me another. Maybe the 1600 was stretching her a bit. So maybe the drop into 1160 could suit her down to the ground, and I think she'll be right there. Uh, you've got Mrs. Browning returning after a break and the one draw not in her favor, 61 kilos. One foul swoops in cracking form. She beats a Yasha. In the Swallow Stakes, she was beaten by Chopper Veloci, also a decent filly, and she's got a handy galloping weight. And then Good Queen Bess uh, didn't stay the mile, and uh, she'll be suited by this 1160 drawn on the outside. Quite a tricky race uh, to look forward to. Certainly, this is what uh, draws the uh, people uh, to the uh, stands at uh, Turvenian and to their screens. And uh, now, of course, uh, let's just indulge your conspiracy theory side of view. It's uh, Kaden Brewer on the one, a Lula star and partner for, I don't know, for a lifetime has uh, been uh, Pilisan and Tholi, although he does stick with the nine law of success, who's certainly in a very, very good form in a deed. Uh, it's decisions there. <laughs> Who is made the decision there? Is it Pile Sunday or is it Stuart? Um, I think it's Pile Sunday. He's just sticking to his, uh, his table. Um, yeah, Cecil. Uh, the, this is a very tricky race. I don't know what to make of it. Um, you know, one false sweep, you can you can see her form is outstanding on the high felt and she's just getting better with each and every start. The same can be said with Mrs. Browning. But now Mrs. Browning is returning from a layoff and she's got the one draw to contend with. So one has to probably lean towards one foul swoop as uh, more race ready. So I do like her chances. Hence me suggesting a place bet on in the beginning. Now if you go back a few runs back to December, in the beginning was returning from a lengthy layoff on that occasion. She is four and a half kilograms better off with one foul sloop for a three and a half length beating. She has improved with the blinkers. She now gets the tongue tie and she's better up the turpentine straight. So I'm hoping that she can feature in the money of year number seven in the beginning. In the beginning, it will be hopefully a continuation of uh, the success that uh, both uh, Joey Soma are uh, teaming up uh, with uh, Muzi Yeni, resuscitating uh, their or re resurrecting their uh, very successful partnership from uh, years back. And they had a winner with the same source of in the beginning, and that'll be Daryl's selection. It is a place or an each way? Place, place. Uh, there it is, and uh, certainly a very, very good suggestion indeed. At the moment, as I speak, is your second biggest outsider on uh, betting, but of course, uh, lots of time before race number seven at Turpentine. For our penultimate and the last chance to get involved in a double on Saturday at uh, Turpentine, we're racing on the stand side track, uh, track rather. It is an ROA marriage rate of 96. And we go over the minimum trip of a thousand meters. Amber Rock back on the high felt and announced itself as a force 
with this current season in uh, the progress, and that was a third, or two and a half lengths off them, over 1,200 metres. Muzieni retains right after that a good uh, high fault uh, debut. Mr. Marie, 10 runners to face up. Hopefully, scratchings will remain on quiet as far as Saturday is concerned. And how do you see the race panning out? Yeah, interesting, uh, Cecil. Yeah, you've got a young three-year-old filly uh, taking on all the company. Um, and she is making her handicap debut. Now, when making her debut itself, it was a cracking effort because she was, slung, um, she was thrown into the grade three pro tier stakes that day. Uh, she hung to the, towards the inside, the worst going, and she just got touched off on the line. And we all know who ran in that race. I mean, it was Lucky Lad. It was Give Me Another Chance, the Africa House. Ziyasha, who's turned out to be a cracking sprinter himself. Mm -hmm. So if she can put in a similar effort um, uh, this time round off a rating of 89, you have to respect her chances over here. So she is one for the shortlist. I think number two, Cosmic Star, has to be a major contender. You know, he's a very honest sort. Last time out, when running second behind Power, power Broker, that form line has worked out extremely well. Iron Giant, Frank that form, Wizzy Act or Waz Act, Frank that form. You've got Champion Warriors run a few places since then. So he's drawn towards the outside, which is favorable. And there is some speed on the outside, so he can get some cover and rattle them late. Um, if, you, if you look past the two of them, it could get uh, very tricky. All right. Now, let's uh, get an affirmative uh, word on the number eight, Amber Act, because we do know that uh, Mr. Burrows has a banquet in his uh, jackpot. This is the last uh, leg, so we have all our eggs on the eight. And uh, please give us more confidence, Mr. Burrows, as to possibly getting a little better on the nose, because they're currently showing at around three to one. Yeah, um, Amber Rock for me, Cecil, the right horse in the race. You know, this filly came to the race course with a massive reputation and she had a hanging problem where she hung to the inside of the track, costing her against Lucky Lad. Uh, she's well above average. I'm hoping that she trains on now um, because she won a maiden finally in Cape Town in December, beating Igogaletu. But last time out, I thought that was impressive because she is a thousand meter horse. And for her to run close up over 1,200 meters, just fading out of contention late against a hard-knocking field, uh, pretty similar to what she takes on this time around, um, dropping back to 1,000 meters, uh, surely she's going to run a big race. I'm not saying she's a good thing, but with 54 kilos, drawn middle, she's going to go to the head of affairs or go handy, and hopefully she can give that winning burst the final 200 because uh, she has got that short run in. Uh, dangers, Oz and Care, Cosmic Star, and Rainbow Reward. Thank you so much uh, for that. Uh, let's just confirm the selection there. It is Amber Rock. So if you are a Darren Burroughs uh, follower, which uh, there are many, and it seems to be a growing region of followers, and then you go, uh, just to recap, it is a win on a quick trip race two, number one, a win on the seven MK's dream race three, and then it is number eight, Amber Rock, as a win bet. And if you really are feeling uh, that confident, throw in in the beginning as a place of selection, courtesy of Mr. Marie.